The main metrics the balance team uses to judge the current health of a champion are two things, pick rate and win rate. In most cases, they try to look at the champion's performance across all ranks, but given the more volatile and erratic nature of lower ranks, as well as the incentive they have from a business standpoint, there may be a subtle bias in favor of the Apex tiers and professional play. Whatever the reason, pick and win rate are the two key metrics to determine how a champion is doing. If they have a double-digit pick rate and are hovering above 52-53%, that's grounds for a champion doing a little too well since pick rate usually is inversely proportional to win rate, as more players are trying out the champion likely without the adequate experience to perform optimally. Another metric that sometimes gets used to ascertain if a champion should be given a second look is the ban rate. If a champion has a ban rate exceeding 30, 40, sometimes 50%, the balance team might consider what compels the player base to be so versed to playing them. A handful of champions, however, perennially experience ban rates in the mid-double digits, regardless of their win rates, and I thought it would make for an interesting miniseries to go over them. So for the inaugural episode, we'll be featuring the greatest showman in all of Runeterra in permanently banned Draven. <laughs> Draven is a character who needs no introduction, immortalized back in 2016 as the weapon of choice for arguably the most famous individual in League history, Tyler 1. He's since been associated with many common traits in the bot lane, a ride or die playstyle either 1v9 steamrolling the game or running it down mid. We'll definitely touch on this later in the video, but he's a very larger than life champion down at bot lane, large enough to strike fear into the hearts of ADC and support players, and then later top jungle and mid when they have to contend with a ranged champion two-shotting them. Draven was conceptualized around rewarding mechanical execution through both positioning and micromanagement. The difference between a player who consistently picks up his spinning axes and one who consistently drops them is almost night and day. Expectedly, he has a very high skill floor and ceiling, and is definitely not someone you can grab right off the shelf and get going with. This results in Draven having rip syndrome where at lower ranks he performs measurably worse and is picked less frequently but in higher ranks he's almost guaranteed to have an above average win rate and get banned at least a quarter of all games. Marksmen are generally classified into two subgroups, neutral and advantage. FGC players and longtime viewers of my channel should be well aware of those terms, but for the uninitiated, there are three game states that occur in any player versus player game. Neutral, denoting an instance where neither player has a situational advantage over the other. Advantage, entailing an instance where you have the situational, you know, advantage over the opposing player. And disadvantage being the inverse. Across the board, marksmen are notoriously exploitable for their disadvantage, or lack thereof. While there are some who may have ways to shrug off minor attempts at engaging, against any summons of hard engage, death is almost certain to follow, which is why ADCs are often accompanied by supports who can alleviate their disadvantage for them. As such, they're usually known for their strong neutral and advantage states. Neutral marksmen would best prefer if the entire game was at a standstill, so they can repeatedly harass enemies with their long-range attacks, comprising Ash, Ezreal, Smolder, Q, Max, Varus, and Senna, among others of course. Advantage marksmen are a bit more aggressive than that. They can temporarily increase their pressure to extreme levels and generally operate best when pursuing fleeing enemies. Jinx, Kai'Sa, Vayne, Samira, Lucian, and of course, our boy Draven. Of the two, advantage marksmen are definitely the more feared due to their tendency to spiral out of control if and when they're given the opportunity. Said advantage can be further accentuated when paired with the support who can press the attack for them. Samira with Nautilus, Draven with Pike, Twitch and Renata, Lucian with Nami or Braum, and so on. However, that comes with an equal likelihood of the situation deteriorating rating for them if things don't work in their favor. And while all marksmen are known for being more volatile in performance and, dare I say, attitude than any other class, no one comes close to the explosiveness of Draven, for better or worse. The easiest way to sum up why everyone bans him in one word would be Amplified. He's the personification of Amplified. Anything that happens, everything that happens, good or bad, is Amplified on him. If you score early kills, it's even better on Draven. If you get a double kill, it's probably going to be a triple or quadra in a few seconds. If things are going well for you, it will feel even better on Draven. The inverse, however, can be just as painful. Falling behind on Draven is far worse than almost any other marksman. That's because his moveset was intentionally designed around it, courtesy of his passive. League of Draven continuously racks up adoration stacks whenever he catches a spinning axe, blasts its a minion or monster, or destroys a turret. If he kills an enemy champion while holding stacks, he converts 2.5 times that amount into gold plus an additional 40. His passive alone should be all the evidence you need for what kind of playstyle to expect. Success or failure in the early game hinges on being able to rack up a decent number of stacks then cashing them in by scoring a kill. It's not uncommon for a Draven player worth their salt to accumulate 400, 500, or 600 gold worth of stacks in a given moment. This means that if he does manage to score a kill, while other marksmen claim 300 gold for their efforts, he can score double, triple, sometimes even quadruple the amount for one single kill. The caveat is that if he dies, he loses the majority of his stacks and the possible gold he would have earned from it. And you don't have to be a Draven player to empathize with how heartbreaking that must be to meticulously collect 100 or 200 stacks, only to get 4 men tower dove and have to start all over again. 
The thing is, similarly to other golden blading champs like Twist of Fate and Gangplank, Draven is balanced around the expectation that you will cash in a certain number of adoration stacks per game, meaning if you do, you'll be stronger than the average marksman, and if you don't, you'll be weaker than the average marksman. There's no such thing as going even with Draven. You're either winning or losing, and yes, in the minds of Draven mains, going 000 on Draven is considered losing. He has to cash in at least a couple hundred stacks worth of gold per game in order to progress nicely through the mid stages. Fortunately, getting kills on him is not a tall order thanks to the very mechanic in which he accumulates them, spinning axe. Draven is the only marksman in the game with a traditional empowered auto attack, unless you count Vayne's tumble as one. Some marksmen do come with buffs that temporarily boost their auto attacks like Ash's Focus or Silver's Ricochet, but Draven is the only one with the Jax W, Wukong Q, Camille Q, Rangar Q type empowered auto attack. One that serves as the focal point of their DPS, and there's a reason he's the only one. Empowered autos by nature are amplifiers because they scale much harder than other forms of damage such as abilities, and giving it to a ranged champion makes it that much easier for them to exert that pressure on you than a melee one. Spinning Axe increases the strength of his next basic attack by a huge amount to the tune of 60 base plus 115% bonus AD as of 13.5. This roughly translates to an 80-90% to boost, or the equivalent of a critical strike. That's a lot of damage! Bear in mind that as an auto attack, building AD will make it stronger, but then it gets extra stronger since it tacks on an extra 150 15% bonus AD. That's how Draven's autos go from doing 150 to 200 in the early game to 6 to 700 in the mid game. Spinning Axe only empowers one auto attack, but if you pick up the axe before it hits the ground, it grants him an extra use of it, and he can hold up to two axes at a time. If you're able to consistently catch axes, you essentially have his Q empowerment up for every single auto attack. Imagine all of Trundle's autos dealing chop damage. That is the kind of DPS you're looking at with Draven. Of course, not even Challenger Draven mains have a 100% catch rate or even a 70% one. Sometimes it's just not practical to catch them. Spinning Axe is the primary reason why Draven can feel so terrifying in the laning phase. He is a ranged champion who not only has an empowered auto attack, but can empower all of his auto attacks. While every other marksman does only 100 damage per auto at best, he's doing 200, 250, sometimes 300. Considering he has a standard 550 attack range, a mutual trade is almost certain to be in his favor. The only ones who can remotely contest him are those who can either outrange him or force the laning phase to play in neutral as much as possible. It's physically impossible for Kai'Sa, Jinx, Tristana, Vayne and such to outtrade Draven if we compare numbers to numbers. Even in the early game before he builds any substantial AD, you don't have any meaningful AD either, so while his autos are chunking you for a quarter of your health, you're barely laying a scratch on him. Also, when I say outrange him, I mean out outrange him. Blood Rush grants him a surge of movement speed, enough to where only a mere 100 units more range than him doesn't matter when he can run up to you quickly to throw out an auto, even if your name is Senna or Caitlyn. Blood Rush's ability to reset is also what gives him one of the most domineering advantage states out of any marksman. With the way axes are programmed to predict a line of movement, if he's chasing after someone, they pretty much end up where Draven is going to be, allowing him to keep refreshing Blood Rush and run you down, hence why he's an advantage marksman. Combining the two main power sources behind Draven though, and you can see why people really don't want to roll the dice with him. Not only does each of his autos do thrice the damage of one of yours, but he can also get thrice the amount of gold from a single kill that you can. And so while you're just finishing a BF sword and your autos do 150 damage, he's already done with Hubris or Collector or whatever he builds first nowadays, and his autos are doing 450-500. Dying once or twice to an enemy Sivir, Ash, or Lucian, you can easily make it up. But dying once or twice to a Draven is just as bad as getting solo killed top. You are permanently screwed for the rest of the game barring jungle intervention. The only way for you to stop Draven in laning phase is to kill him before he kills you. Either hope he sucks and drops all his axes, or pray that your support is him and score a kill on him to lose all his stacks, because Draven players are fully aware of the kind of lead they can secure off a single kill and will do everything they can to get one, even if it kills them, literally. Draven players have easily the biggest feast or famine mindset in the game. They will abandon all sense of caution since, in their eyes, a mutual exchange is a win for them, so long as they score the kill first. It's not a takedown, it has to be a kill. Remember when I said Draven is balanced around the expectation of cashing in at least a few hundred stacks in the early to mid game? Some of you might be wondering how a champion with empowered autos that multiply your damage falls off in the late game. It's not that Draven doesn't do damage after 25 minutes. Believe me, he does f damage. Each of his autos has 6 items do like 1500 crits easily. Therein lies the problem though, he's only damage. Draven's abilities offer nothing but damage and more damage. Fortunately, being a marksman, that's all you really need, so Draven doesn't fall off in the same way a Lee Sin or Renekton falls off. It's just so when compared to other marksmen, he does fall off. The reason for that is, all of his abilities are hard capped, whereas the rest of his spears advance in more than just strength. League of Draven is not a combat passive. It may help him get more combat stats quicker, but once Draven's full build, he effectively has no passive. Spinning Axis has a hard cap of 2. Technically 3 if you're some kind of freak and can continuously juggle 3 axes non-stop, but even then you're capped at a certain number of empowered attacks. 
Hypothetically, if you went full lethal tempo full attack speed Draven and had 5.0 attack speed, you would still only empower 2 of those 5 attacks per second at most. Blood Rush is a full reset from rank 1, so it doesn't matter to Draven as much as decreasing Kaisa's E cooldown or Zai's W cooldown is to them. For the other marksmen, they get progressively stronger, not just in damage but also uptime and other things. If Zaya builds AD and attack speed, not only does she attack faster, but she can throw out more feathers, which in turn enable her to deal more AoE damage as they come out and come back. Vayne deals more damage with auto attacks, but she also gets more pox of silver bolts more often, and with it being percent of true damage, it scales with any champion. Building damage on Jin not only makes his attacks more painful, but having all damaging abilities in the form of Q, W, and Ultimate, plus the occasional captive audience trap, increases all of his other forms of pressure, not to mention Deadly Flourish gaining extra root duration, and he himself getting a huge boost to speed the more he crit strikes. Draven on the other hand has only empowered auto attacks. The rest of his kit is fixed in value. Whirling Death does have an execute threshold based on the number of adoration stacks, but with those stacks resetting to zero once cashed in, it's not something that accumulates throughout the course of a game to where his ultimate becomes like a vague alt. Other marks can get more range, more CC duration, more AoE damage, more whatever, while Draven only gets more single target damage. Understanding this, Draven players feel the pressure to end the game as quickly as possible. Even after scoring a triple kill down bot lane and being a full item ahead of his opponent, they will still press on as if they have only 10 minutes left to live. Draven players have a higher tendency of overextending and throwing leads because not only do they feel confident that they can two-shot enemy champions, but there's that subtle pressure of getting outscaled if they take too long. You can see how this gets exceptionally more tilting when Draven starts the game behind. With that kind of volatile experience, it's no wonder Draven fosters mental instability that would make even serial killers afraid of them. On one end, you have games where he's Thanos, 1v9 two-shotting everyone on the enemy team just because you gave him one single kill in lane. On the other, you have an 0-7 Draven turbo-feeding because he's thirsting too hard for that one kill. The difference between Draven and other early game champs is not that he's guaranteed a strong early game. He has the chance to have a strong early game. Like I said, League of Draven is not a combat passive. It has the potential to give you more combat stats, but unlike Renekton, Darius, Pantheon, and such, it's not assured. You have to earn it, and Draven players will fiend for that first kill no matter what. Now, given that this is League of Legends, one of the cardinal laws of nature in this game is that all the good players of a champion are always on the enemy team and all the bad ones are on yours. Lee Sin, Yasuo, Mestri, Graves, Zed, Rangar, whenever they're on your team, they're 0-10, but on the enemy team, pick a god and pray because you're about to meet them. None more so than Draven. In the eyes of virtually every ADC and or support player, there's a statistically higher chance of them losing the game if Draven is present, so they don't even bother. Besides, Halex made a very good statement that sums up the real reason everyone bans him. They don't ban the champ, they ban the creature behind. It's funny how despite the sheer toxicity that surrounds Draven, I actually consider him one of the better designed ADCs in the game. Spinning Axe is a very creative mechanic. Though it seems overpowered at times, it appropriately rewards you for juggling axes while fighting. He's basically the Darius of bot lane, fitting as their brothers. So the champion is well made, it's just the competitive and hostile PvP environment of League that paints a guy like him in a more negative light than he should be. What do you guys think about Draven? Do you believe players are overreacting to him, or are they perfectly justified in permabanning him? Feel free to share it in the comments. Hope you guys enjoyed the first episode of Permanently Banned. If you have, it would greatly support the channel if you left a like and subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at VarsVaram, join my Discord server, and be sure to leave suggestions on who I should work on for the next episode. I'm currently looking at either Zed or Rengar. But for now, thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.